Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Noor. Today, we're talking about the best U.S. collegiate esports program, University of Hawaii in Manoa. Welcome, Kevin. Hi, happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Catherine. All right, fantastic. So, Kevin, what is your role at UH uh, Manoa Esports Program? So, my role is to, uh, so my direct title is uh, University of Hawaii Esports uh, Program Assistant, or uh, I work under Sky, who's our director. And the main purpose for um, my role is try to make sure that I can work with our students uh, in any way possible, whether that be competition, community, uh, career relations. My goal is trying to empower students to make sure that they can make that next leap in their uh, esports journeys. So I understand you've been involved in esports at UH Manoa for quite some time. Um, how long have you been doing it? So I got hired from the university right after I graduated college in 2019. And so it's been just a little over three years and uh, I'm aiming for my fourth at the moment. Fantastic. So. I understand that UH has just earned an awesome award. Why don't you tell us about that award? So recently, we just uh, won the Collegiate Program of the Year in 2022. Um, the significance for uh, the award is just to showcase to our students, our administration, the parents, um, all the work that they put into uh, really paid off. And I'm just very grateful and happy to the committee, um, the people who voted for us, um, that just showcase how hard it was and how how much work it took to earn this award. But I also do want to shout out all the other college, or colleges that were nominated alongside of us, University of Warwick, Illinois State, Maryville, um, University of North Carolina, Charlotte, and many more. All these programs, all these uh, colleges are doing their best to try to push esports forward. And without them, th there's just a, a vacuum of students who I would say have nothing to, I would say ha not have anything to look forward to, but, but this is their sense of home. This is their sense of pride. And by all of us putting our, our efforts into making collegiate better, uh, we're just making it a better place for students and chasing their dreams. Fantastic. So um, what was the criteria to your knowledge, or at least what did you have to submit in order to be up for the award? So the criteria for the award was um, based off of a 25% fan vote and 75% based off uh, an, a panel of collegiate experts. And for us, we just talked about the many things that we did within our program to showcase why we believe we deserve this awards. Um, a lot of it revolved around the community efforts that uh, Sky and I worked towards, such as uh, sending some of our students to work with the APRU and helping uh, underdeveloped collegiate programs. Uh, working with uh, the Overwatch League to make sure that we can get student internships, um, competition, uh, doing work around the local community, and much more. Fantastic. So let's talk about um, your work with um, kind of underdeveloped programs. What do you do there? So uh, with the APRU, we were able to send a couple of our student leaders to work with them and trying to help them develop their content. Uh, their programs into making sure what is the structure when it takes it, uh, or for what it takes in collegiate competition. Um, a lot of our students are just trying to raise their skills, essentially skill points in leadership. And so by uh, doing so, we're, we're not only helping them uh, with their skills within the program, but uh, for future when they go into industry. Sure. So at some point, UH was, you know, starting their program and having to rely on others. Is that right? Uh, I would say so. And uh, just to sh share a little bit more about that story. So um, during my final uh, year at UH in 2019, um, the university has always had gaming clubs, but the gaming clubs would always um, fizzle out or the leadership structure wouldn't be there. And so um, I was able to meet a son by the name of Eugenia Yoon, who was a collegiate lead at Corsair. And so uh, Corsair is a computer hardware and peripheral company. And Sky was able to introduce me to her to uh, join as, an, as a student ambassador for the university. Um, from then, Eugenia gave each of the schools 
uh, an assignment, so to speak, to uh, do something within your campus that's notable. And I decided, hey, let's make a gaming club that can last. And due to that, uh, she was the mentor. Uh, and this is what uh, you just asked about is, oh, you must have needed help from somewhere. I didn't know what I was doing, but thanks to Eugenia, she was able to guide me through, create the club. And because of that, the university saw our efforts how uh, and saw how popular gaming and esports was on campus that they wanted to take me on full time. So without her, I, I might not even be working here. So I, I owe a lot of um, my early development and um, my early adult life thanks to Eugenia. Well, you know, that seems to be a common thread with esports that these emerging programs have to look to more developed programs. And now mm -hmm. you're a more developed program. And so, it, you know, it makes sense that you're paying it forward and helping more developing programs. Correct, correct. And I think I know how you mentioned you just mentioned that UH is a fully fledged developed program. I think we're still growing just because we won this award doesn't mean we can um, be stagnant. There's so much room for growth. Um, and the main thing, at least what I hope to perpetuate is this is all for the students. We can't just stop. Um, just like every other organizations uh, within a college campus, I hope that they're trying to push and strive for the best environment for students and trying to help them get into whatever industry they're pushing for. And that's what we're trying to do in uh, esports and collegiate. Sure. And you know what? seem to be probably the biggest news story of the year was the Overwatch program. Tell us about what happened with Overwatch and UH. So in 2021, and this is uh, throughout early years of COVID, um, esports was still continuing, but unfortunately, um, it, it couldn't be back in person. And I know a lot of people, when they think of video games, when they think of esports, you don't think of that human-to-human uh, -human interaction. But uh, as a matter of fact, it's just as uh, significant as just playing on a on a screen or a TV. And so with Overwatch League, um, they reached out to us because they have global competition. And because of COVID, the teams from the Eastern Hemisphere could not compete against teams from uh, the US or the Western Hemisphere. So when they reached out to us, um, we were a little perplexed at first because if you play games here, you um, know that ping is a massive issue. And so we thought there was no way this is going to be possible. And they reached out, we ran some tests and they said, we like it. And Sky and I, I just remember we had the conversation of, are you sure? Like, is this really okay? Uh, our players like uh, have frustrations with the ping. So what about pro players? And they said, this is going to be uh, just okay. Uh, they asked us, or they had a survey within the entire league. What's your minimum ping threshold? They all said 90 and we hit that target. And so we went full fledged ahead um, and we worked throughout uh, the year in 2021 to make it happen. And thanks to the Overwatch League staff, thanks to the university, we were able to provide internships to our students where they could earn collegiate credit and make it just more than a, a rental agreement. We, we made sure that this was something that students can learn from they can shadow these experts they can work with the teams they can work with the managers and it was such a fantastic experience and we thought okay that was great and then in 2022 which is last year they reached out and said we hey we want to try to work together again and make something happen and because of our past experience and our past knowledge it went very smoothly and we were very happy to just be able to work with them so when you're talking about ping you're talking about latency right oh yes correct uh it's it's mainly about um, the idea of when you create an action uh, in game, how long it would take for the game to register that action. And so, um, pro players usually like a ping of one to two milliseconds. But uh, once it gets past like the, I would say fifty milliseconds, I think a lot of people have complaints. And because we're from Hawaii, um, depending on which game you you play, you can go up from. 80 to 120, which is where a lot of players get their frustration from. So in terms of um, playing, they had to, they were competing against people in Asia, right? Correct. And so what the Overwatch League did was um, they would have their teams playing from Korea uh, and China, and we would have direct access to uh, our Tokyo servers. And so teams from Korea and China would connect to Tokyo, and then all the Western teams would fly to Hawaii. We would connect to Tokyo, and then both sides would have 90 ping. Um, 
and that was the main reason why they reached out to UH was because we had that direct access or that direct um, uh, fiber line to uh, Tokyo servers. So do you think that because of that, you are primed for having future partnerships with other um, games and tournaments? I would hope so. I think the big goal is trying to make sure that or trying to showcase to the industry that the University of Hawaii can provide that type of support and just showcase that Hawaii is more than just tourism and beaches and hotels. Uh, to be quite frank, that actually did help us. Not, I wouldn't say the beaches. Like, yes, it's a nice thing, but the hotels and the infrastructure, um, it allows people to come in. But we do need to continue to beefy up our, our, our fiber optic lines, uh, our bandwidth, uh, and all the, the tech infrastructure here, because I think we're still a little behind the times. And if we can continue to build that up, I think it would make a lot more um, publishers and game developers to want to come here and showcase their uh, their leagues. But I do also want to add, by, by uh, building up our infrastructure, you also keep local talent, because that's the one problem that we, I think people from Hawaii have, is once you graduate from college, you think, okay, if I'm in tech, I really can't stay here. There's uh, limited career options. Where am I going to go? They all fly out to California, to New York, uh, to uh, Seattle, um, to wherever th there is a job market. And hopefully we can continue to just build up our infrastructure because we have a lot of talented people here. It's just very unfortunate that we continue to lose them just because we just don't have the support for them. Sure. And do you think that Overwatch became more aware of Hawaii as a potential place where they can find talent and maybe even have that talent work locally in Hawaii. I believe so. I, I believe they really got to show, or I would love to say the Aloha spirit within our students. Um, I think it's a rare thing for just the outside uh, or the mainland um, people to see how much we care and how much effort we put into our students and then how much they want to reciprocate that. Um, I think one of the key things was all the staff would just mention, oh, it, this was like interesting to me to see how nice everyone was or how welcoming. And I think that's just a natural part of being born and raised here. Um, I think our favorite part was working with some of the Overwatch staff that were from Hawaii. They were from Maui and they were, uh, some were from Oahu as well. And just to see them interact with our students, uh, you know, showcasing a little bit of pigeon and just, uh, you know, hanging out with the staff and uh, learning a little bit about our culture as well. It was just a, a perfect environment for uh, for everyone. It was a win-win. Did you hear of any opportunities that arose out of out of the Overwatch um, tournaments? Not as far as I know, but I do uh, do believe that. So, like, I shouldn't say it's a direct cause from the Overwatch events. It was more so our program overall. But um, because of the work and efforts uh, that our students have done. A couple of them have landed jobs in other um, publishers and other companies at the moment, and esports and, and gaming. And so we want to continue to drive that number up because that's, to me, like the true value of success um, is just one, how, how much can we support the students? And two, what can we do for them after uh, college? Sure. And you know what's interesting is I talk to people all over the world about esports and they have heard of University of Hawaii Manoa Esports Program, and I think this award will put you more on the map. What do you think about that? To be quite frank, uh, I'm glad people are, are putting us on the map, but I just hope we can continue to develop partnerships and um, with other orgs and, uh, and people outside the program just to support students. Quite frankly, like I don't need notoriety. I don't need like social media numbers. I don't need likes. I don't need clicks. But if it helps our program, I will, uh, for, by all means, like please reach out to me. I want to work. Um, and I just want to provide the best environment for our students. And I know a lot of other collegiate programs are doing the exact same thing. One thing I do want to shout out is a lot of our, uh, our, a lot of other programs are working with an even more limited budget than us. And they're doing fantastic things too. I, I just hope that everyone can see that college esports is, is hard. And we're all working towards the same goal of, hey, let's provide the best environment for our students. Let's continue to help them in terms of competition, but let's also help them in academics and research and career. That, that's my main goal. So let's talk about the esports 
program at UH? What games are you guys playing? So currently we have uh, titles in eight games. And so that would be our Smash team, our Valorant team, League of Legends, Overwatch, Rocket League, Rainbow Six, Apex, and Call of Duty. And within those, we have a varsity team on all of them and three JV teams as well. So that really differs from traditional sports. You, yep. Your program is very robust with mm -hmm. many players. How many players do you have? We would have approximately 100 varsity players and then give or take 30 uh, junior varsity players and then a community of around 1,400 people. So when are tryouts generally? Tryouts are generally around the start of every fall semester. And so that's when every team is trying to recruit for players. But because of the, the churn of collegiate, some people take a, a semester off, some people have to, gra or some people graduate. And so we also have like a smaller spring tryout and spring semester is usually where the bigger competitions are. Um, and yeah. Okay. So are there any scholarships offered at this point from UH? So currently we have scholarships for our, our Overwatch team. And this is where I talked about like wanting to work with uh, other programs and other organizations to um, support our students because, I mean, ideally, I would love to get scholarships for all teams that um, the students work just as hard as I would say traditional athletes. And I, I just want to make sure that they're able to support themselves without having to worry about um, financial factors. Sure. And are the players, are they um, taking classes in esports or are they generally majoring in something else? A majority of them are majoring in, I would say, STEM and then a bunch of others in biology. But we do have one class that's taught by uh, Sky, our director, who teaches an esports course, every uh, esports and society course every spring semester. Terrific. Um, all right. So um, have you, you know, I know that you've been, you know, involved in the program since 2019 and it's been growing. What was the impact of COVID to your program? Weirdly enough, COVID, because it's esports, uh, we were able to function. Um, in fact, we actually grew because of COVID. It just did, like, it was a weird, it's a weird, uh, so I'll go into the story. I got hired in uh, October of 2019 and we were uh, doing a fantastic job of just, this is my start. This is also my first job. And then I remember COVID hitting. I had just come back from a trip in Boston uh, at PAX East. And then COVID hit and I just talked to Sky and we're like, oh no, like, what are we going to do? We can't have anything in person. And we're like, okay, let's try to keep our program up afloat. And then we worked with a bunch of student leaders and said, hey, wait, we don't have to just keep our program af afloat. We can definitely uh, work together and build upon this. And because of that, we 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 uh, started to build on more teams. Thank you to, especially Kaysen. He was a hard proponent on, hey, let's get a Valorant team. And now it's one of our most successful teams on, uh, at, U at UH. And so continue to grow. And when I first started to, we didn't have uh, how, it's a space for our students. Like we had an area, but we would have to reserve it and we'd compete against the likes of engineering with uh, the Academy of Creative Media um, and anyone else who wants to use uh, our space called the iLab. But because of COVID, um, ownership let go of it and they were like, okay, we don't have anyone who can watch over it. Who needs it? And then we swooped in and said, hey, the esports is, uh, teams are in here all the time. Can we please take it over? And so now we're able to have a space where our teams and our players can all come in, a community can hang out. And yeah, it, COVID definitely did impact us. And personally, how it affected me was, it was hard for me to see um, the growth because I wasn't there in person, if that makes sense. Uh, I was always at home just seeing the numbers. Like, yeah, we would grow, but it, it was hard for me to grasp the impact that our university's esports program had on these students. And then when we finally came back and we saw the livelihood or the, the liveliness of um, the space itself, that's when I was like, oh, okay, we really did do a great job. And now let's continue to grow upon it because we can't stop here. So you said, you mentioned that it was your first job. So your first job is in esports. Now, you seem to have a job that would be the envy of so many mm -hmm. people. Do you hear from a lot of people like, wow, you get to do what you love? Yeah, I think a lot of my peers would all, like who are in traditional uh, industry, they're like, oh, wow, this is the dream job. And yeah, uh, quite frankly, I, I, 
I love what I'm doing. I love working with the students. I love working with the administration and trying to convince them that, hey, this is something that we need to continue to build upon. And that's not to say it's not all glam and, and glorious. I think everyone who works in esports knows how exhausting, how many hours you have to put in. But I think we do it because of the love that we have for our program, our students, um, and our teams. There's no, it's a nonstop grind. And we just have to continue to put in the effort um, to continue to grow it. So what about sponsorship? Have you been able to um, attract sponsorship to bring into um, uh, the program or are your individual athletes, are they attracting sponsors? So we just recently got that uh, Aloha Pacific sponsorship that was able to provide scholarships to our Overwatch team. And so hopefully we can continue to grow upon it. Um, we are also getting a second space, which is quite crazy because I know a lot of other colleges are struggling to get even just one. And so we're getting another one at St. Clair. Um, they're doing a major renovation um, to make it the Student Success Center. And we want to have our esports competitive teams um, be housed there and uh, let this ILA be our community center. And with that, we want to try to attract sponsorship to showcase, hey, this is what our teams get. This is what our students get. Um, please try out. Please come to our university. Learn from uh, or be a part of the program. And um, hopefully we can help you succeed. So are your athletes, are they allowed to uh, accept sponsorship money um, under NC? I mean, I don't think they're part of NCAA. Maybe they are not. Speak to that. So I believe students are able to receive their own sponsorships, but with the industry, I don't think, at least in collegiate, I haven't seen um, just specific players get uh, sponsorships unless they're, in, I would say, uh, tier two, which is like almost pro. And so I believe it can happen. It's just we don't see it very frequently. And so are, are the esports athletes at UH, are they doing streaming and, you know, outside of mm -hmm. their regular play yeah uh i think that's all individuals if students want to stream we would provide a, an area for them to do so um, also content we have a content team here uh, which helps to promote our players helps uh, promote themselves and uh, i would say add a personality to them because here's the he, i'll add this to the podcast um i think one of the major problems in just collegiate esports in particular is parents don't understand what's happening within uh, their you know what their child's are or what their child is doing like yes they might be playing games but they don't really understand especially here in hawaii too and so i think we need need to showcase like hey what is the student that's playing the game rather than just oh here's this character in this video game that's clicking heads or um winning the video game that doesn't really resonate or connect to the parents but if the parents are able to say hey this is what they're majoring in this is what they're doing this is what they like outside of just being a, a master at a video game, then they can get more invested rather than just, oh, here's a video game player who happens to be really good. Sure. Have you seen any athletes actually go on to use the skill in future employment? Yes. Well, I would say just purely like esports are, are, are competitive teams, but more so our, especially our content team. That's been the most successful in getting people into industry is just trying to make sure that they can utilize the skills here and continue to grow and level up their skill and then further themselves into uh, a publisher or another uh, organization. Sure. And, you know, the, the parent um, feedback and, and pressure, you know, that would seem to be a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. What skills are you telling parents that the esports athletes and other esports um, personnel are acquiring? So I think a lot of parents. Uh, the initial conversation is, okay, they see their 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 child is playing a lot of video games. Like, okay, yes, they're very good, but what what else can they learn, or what else is out there? And not even just parents. When I talk to this, the the competitive teams, and actually, let's cut back. So I always have one-on-one -on -one meetings with uh, students and I always try to ask them, hey, what are their majors? And it's like very generic, but it's also like, hey, do you want to do this? And the reason why is because I had this exact conversation with myself and my friends uh, when I was an engineer student. I was miserable, I was studying all the time and it took my friends to realize, hey, Kev, like you're just not having fun. You're just there studying all the time. They're going to concerts, 
they're living a normal college life. And that's not to say you can't do this as an engineer, but you have to sacrifice so much of your time. And that, to me, I was lucky enough to meet Sky, who you know got me connected into the industry. But I want to do that same role to my students. Like, hey, do you actually want to be an engineer? Do you actually want to become a doctor? If they do, great. I want to support them. I want to help them succeed. Let's continue to be on our esports team, but I'm not going to sway them away. But if they if they're like on the fence, they're like, oh, I don't know. Like, you know, just uh, uh, they're they're a little unsure. They're on the fence because it's that idea of like the red pill and the blue pill. Like, do I want to chase um, financial freedom or do I want to chase their passion? And I always try to tell them that you can mix both now within esports. And so just trying to get them skills and, hey, do you want to be uh, in management or do you want to uh, look into marketing or finance or do you want to help with production and broadcast or content creation? There's so much around esports. I would say your key thing to every student is try to truly understand what you like inside and out. Doesn't have to be connected to gaming and then learn those skills in college and then apply it to esports and gaming. Don't just think of the idea of I'm going to chase esports and gaming because that doesn't work. It's like saying I work in movies. I, I learned this from Eugenia. Well, like, what do you do in movies? Do you do set design? Do you do makeup? Do you do uh, the cinematography? There's so much. You cannot just say I'm in movies. It's the same with esports. Figure out what you want to do in esports, learn those skills, learn it in college, and then apply it to uh, uh, the esports program. Sorry, that was a, a long-winded answer, but I hope that no, helped. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, you know, would you agree that more people know about esports now than they did in 2019 when you got started? 100%. And I still don't think a majority of our campus knows. And I hope that uh, we can continue to showcase like, hey, like esports is here to stay. This is something that we can really invest in. This is something that students really care about. Um, I've, I did a, a, a Q&A with uh, preschoolers here and all of them are playing video games. All of them have mobile phones. And I just remember thinking at the time, I could barely hold a mouse and keyboard at your age and everyone is now invested in it. And so why don't we invest in it in the healthiest way possible and trying to help them provide it or and trying to help them achieve uh, different skills rather than just, you know, clicking buttons. Fantastic. Well, so can people find you at your website? Kevin? Yes, people can find me at my website. You can also find me, uh, or you can also reach out to me through email at uh, kevmn at hawaii.edu. You can reach out to, to us on our Discord at discord.gg slash UH Esports. Um, you'll find all the resources there, and we really hope that you can be a part of our program and um, help students succeed. I also want to throw this in uh, really quick. Um, I think a lot of people want to uh, want to support collegiate esports. Look around your community. Look around what colleges are trying to do their best. Yes, UH Esports won the award, but I do want to sh uh, sh showcase all the other awesome, uh, amazing programs out there. UH Esports isn't the only one. There are so many other great schools. I want to thank our administration, the parents, uh, all the students that worked hard. This isn't just a, oh, Kevin got is speaking, so he must have received the award. No, this is all of us. We all worked hard. Um, and I just want them to uh, just enjoy that little moment that, hey, we, we all did this together. Fantastic. Well, Kevin, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Catherine. It was really nice uh, speaking to you again. All right. Terrific. So thank you to our viewers for joining us today. In two weeks, my guest will be Megan Van Petten, and we'll be discussing leadership in esports. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.